And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. It is Friday. Congratulations, Northeast Ohio. We've made it to another weekend. Yeah, right. Deep breath. Exhale. Thank you so much for choosing What's New along with Betsy Kling. I'm Jay Crawford. Betsy, good afternoon to you. A busy day, one that includes our best coronavirus numbers here in Ohio in months. Yeah, I have to tell you, I saw the number and I was like, wow, yeah. this this is a good number. I mean, it, we still have people that are getting sick, but certainly it's not quite the shocking numbers that we have seen over the past couple of months. We are starting off with this good news. Our COVID-19 numbers are down quite a bit from yesterday and down quite a bit from average now. In the last 24 hours, 4,200 cases were reported. That's the third time this week we've dipped below 5,000 daily reported cases. Yeah, that is certainly good to see, Betsy. In fact, all Four of our key indicators are down today. Positivity rate dipped by another eight tenths of a percentage point down to 8.4%. That's the lowest Betsy it has been in 13 weeks. Also, hospitalizations continue to fall down another 112 patients today. That means we have 3,270 COVID-19 patients in Ohio hospitals. Deaths were also down by 28 from yesterday, but sadly, we lost another 81 Ohioans to complications from the coronavirus. And of course, the big question now is when can I get the vaccine? And as the Biden administration continues to roll out plans for tackling coronavirus, we're starting to hear that the timeline for vaccinating the general public may take longer than first thought. Brandon Simmons joins us now to help us understand what to expect in the coming months as states continue to ask for more supply. Brandon, this is a frustrating process for so many people on many different levels. Yeah, definitely frustrating, but I think uh, the key here is patience. The plan from the Biden administration is ambitious but doable, according to our nation's leading health experts. Across the country, they're pledging 100 million vaccinations in 100 days. Now, many, of course, wonder how that's possible, considering the limited supply of vaccine reported by our local health departments, as well as state health officials who are pleading with the federal government for more supply. Now, each week, Ohio plans to open up vaccine registration to more people, but even if you are able to register, vaccines may not actually be available at that time. Now, under the previous administration, the goal was to get vaccines in pharmacies around the country by the end of February. The new CDC director says that's no longer the case. And as I said early on, I'm going to tell you the truth here. I don't think late February we're going to have vaccine in every pharmacy in this country. But I also want to be very cognizant of the fact that after 100 days, there are still a lot of Americans who need vaccine. And so we have our pedal to the metal to make sure that we can get as much vaccine out there. Now, according to Dr. Fauci, we would need 70 to 85 percent of the country to be vaccinated in order to approach any degree of normality by fall. That's his prediction. Now, remember, that's just the goal. So everything has to go smoothly. Now, to be clear right now, there is no state that has an abundance of vaccine available right now. We're all sort of in the same boat. It will likely take many months before a vaccine is readily available for everyone, Betsy. It's something to consider, and of course, with the logistics involved, with keeping everything at the right temperature, it's pretty complicated. So patience is the big key. Brandon, thank you. Have a great weekend. Jay. Well, now on to our feed at five, and there are conflicting reports tonight about the status of this summer's Olympic Games, which, of course, are slated for Tokyo in late July. Yesterday, Reuters was reporting that behind the scenes, Tokyo and Japanese officials had concluded that because of the coronavirus, it's just too risky to stage the Olympic Games. However, today, the head of the Japanese Olympic Committee pushed back hard on that report, calling it wrong and ridiculous. He says the country is forging ahead with plans to hold the summer games. Cancellation would be a huge financial blow to Japan. One report claims it has already cost more than $3.7 billion. Now, what about the athletes training for these games? Of course, cancellation would be a huge disappointment to them all over the country and the world, those that are currently training. Our Will Uick spoke with an Ohio Olympic athlete today. Will, what did he have to say? Yeah, Jay, for these athletes, these Olympic hopefuls, this is starting to feel a little eerily similar to how it felt this time last year. For them right now and for the world that's watching, really the only certain thing about the Tokyo Olympics is uncertainty. 
Oh. I mean, it does come once every four years, and the amount of work that goes into it like cannot be understated. Willoughby South grad and hammer thrower Sean Donnelly competed in the 2016 Olympic trials, hoping for a trip to Rio, but came up just short. So he's been training and preparing ever since with his eyes on Tokyo. I totally changed who I am as an athlete in hopes of making this team just for this one sliver of glory that happens every four years. His dream was already given a one-year postponement, and now it's in question yet again. Quite stressful to think about um, the Olympics being postponed or, or, or canceled in, indefinitely. Meanwhile, Columbus, Ohio native and decorated Olympian Simone Biles is also worried about the likelihood of the games, games that she admits could be her last. Definitely do feel older every morning whenever I wake up and I go into the gym. Um, so I just am really listening to my body and seeing how it goes. Despite the rumors and unpredictability, all athletes can do is block out the noise and keep training to be ready for whatever happens. My main focus is um, the 2021 Olympics and then we'll see from there. I see both sides of it. You know, I don't want the Olympics to get canceled, but also I understand if they do. A big date to watch here that may tip their hand a little bit, March 25th. Jay, that's the date that the torch is supposed to be lit and then start making its trek. And if you'll remember, it was March of 2020 that they actually made the call to postpone it. So March is a month that's looming very large as far as how this Olympics will proceed, if it will or not. Well, Will, we have, uh, we've learned over the last year that a lot can happen in two months, so we'll be watching carefully. Thank you very much. Now, Betsy, as you know, my son Corey, just like Sean Donnelly, has spent much of the past four years chasing his Olympic dreams. He's a long jumper. He missed making the team just like Sean in 2016. He was at the Olympic trials, but he was still in college then. So he's really been gearing his entire career towards these games. He has trained post-collegiately at the U.S. Olympic Track and Field Center in Chula Vista, California. For the last three plus years, up until about nine months ago, that's when the facility was closed due to COVID concerns. He now trains at the Spire Institute in Geneva. He will compete in a meet tomorrow. It's a big meet for him. Right now, he's jumping as well as he ever has, and he knows that his Olympic dreams, at least for now, are still alive, but boy, they are very tenuous. And Betsy, I'll tell you, last night when this report broke, I had seen it, and I didn't have the heart to bring it up to Corey because I know he's been on pins and needles. And then eventually he saw it, and we had a pretty lengthy conversation about it. He, like everybody else, is in limbo. He's going to continue to train hmm. in hopes that he gets the opportunity to represent his country in Japan. And that's really all we can do right now is keep our fingers crossed and hope. Crazy time. Well, as you said, you know, you, what do you say to him? I mean, as a parent, how do you tell your child <laughs> this information? I mean, what was going through your mind at that point? I was scared to death. I knew he was going to see it eventually. Hmm. I just didn't want to be the one to tell him what the report was. Because as you know, Reuters is a very good news source. And when I saw that Reuters was the source to this report, my heart immediately sank because usually they're dead on. Um, we followed the events over the course of last night and early this morning. He was excited this morning when he woke up and saw that the Japanese Olympic officials pushed back hard on that report. They called it ridiculous and wrong. So we'll see. I know the world has so many bigger concerns right now than whether or not an Olympic Games will go on. For me personally, and, and having watched him really put his life on pause for the last four years, as a parent, you know this, Betsy, you just hope that your, your children's dreams can continue, and, and that's where we are right now, hoping. Definitely. Well, hang in there, Corey. We're pulling for you, too. We certainly are. Okay, Betsy, the sports world lost a baseball icon today as Hank Aaron passed away. He was 86 years old. What an all-time great. Aaron's baseball career was one of the most remarkable we've ever seen. Longevity, check. He played 23 seasons, 21 of them at an all-star level. That is unprecedented. Still to this day, Aaron holds the record for the most runs batted in in a career and the most extra base hits. And in 1974, he hit career home run number 715, breaking the all-time home run record held for nearly a half century by Babe Ruth. What a marvelous moment for baseball. What a marvelous moment for Atlanta and the state of Georgia. What a marvelous moment for the country and the world. 
a black man is getting a standing ovation in the deep south for breaking a record of an all-time baseball idol. Well, the late, great Vin Scully with the call of Aaron's record-breaking home run. Betsy, I was fortunate enough to conduct a lengthy sit-down interview with Mr. Aaron when I worked for ESPN. I found him to be one of the most gracious and humble superstars I have ever interviewed. And I asked Hank what stood out to him all those years after he had broke Babe Ruth's record. And he actually mentioned to me Vin Scully's call. He said after he heard it, it really drove home just how significant an accomplishment that was. A black man getting a standing ovation in the deep south. It was, it was profound when it happened in 1974. And honestly, mm -hmm. Betsy, just thinking about it, it is still profound all these years later. What a remarkable uh, achievement and what a remarkable man. And a great role model for so many people. I mean, he definitely paved the way for some of the greats that continue to play right now. So, uh, you know, wow. Just to, to have the chance to talk to him, obviously, that was big for you. But to have the chance to remember him and pass on his legacy, that's the, the best thing that all of us could possibly do. He'll Certainly be cool stuff for yeah. us. He definitely will. All right, what's next for us here on What's New? Well, there are new thieves that are stealing your personal information and we have ways that you can protect yourself then fans of the netflix series bridgerton i'm raising my hand right now uh will be very happy with the latest news on the series and of course we want to know what's happening over the weekend because it is the weekend matt standridge joins us with an update on that forecast hi matt hey chief it's good to see you man it got cold today it kept getting colder and colder we'll stay cold this weekend but it's been nice to Look at these sky cams. You're looking downtown, the CSU cam. And what's been cool is that you see some of these snow squalls that have been coming over the lake. We'll still have some snow showers tonight, but we'll start to clear them out a little bit later this evening and into tomorrow morning. We'll break down the forecast for you coming up.
Well, it used to be your social security number that was the most important number to protect. We've been told that forever, but that could be changing now. It appears it could be your cell phone number. Thieves have found a pretty easy way to actually hijack your smartphone. And as consumer investigator Danielle Serino tells us, they could confiscate your email, even clear out your bank accounts. Imagine trying to use your phone and then this. It was a zombie phone. It was on. I could see all my stuff, but I couldn't make a call, couldn't text, couldn't go to the Internet. Tony Petricola is the head of a cybersecurity firm, and he, of all people, got hacked. I mean, I have all my accounts locked down with MFA and everything, so they weren't able to get anything. It was just a hassle. But yeah. I will say this, if that happened to the average person who doesn't have everything locked down, they probably are in all kinds of bank accounts and credit accounts and all kinds of things. He was the victim of something called SIM swapping. It refers to that tiny card that's in all smartphones and can cause huge damage because it holds all of your information and anyone can buy one online. What we're seeing is we're seeing threat actors come in there, they're calling up the phone company and they're claiming to be you and saying, hey, I lost my SIM and they get a new SIM card issued or they do a SIM transfer. Which means everything on your your phone is transferred to their phone, and they can then intercept your calls and texts, including the verification codes many companies send to let you access your online accounts. They use information that they've gathered from different sources, including maybe your social security number, your last known billing address. They may even have, you know, passwords to your accounts. This investor lost nearly $24 million in cryptocurrency after his SIM card was swapped, and this tech consultant lost nearly two million blaming employees at his cell carrier for the swap. But money isn't all they're after. Hackers broke into the Twitter account of Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey in a SIM swap scheme and proceeded to send offensive messages. It led the company to turn off its tweet by text service in most locations saying, we're taking this step because of vulnerabilities that need to be addressed by mobile carriers and our reliance on having a linked phone number for two-factor authentication. Think about if you have corporate email and they you know, could get into you know, documents or into your VPN. Uh, now all of a sudden they just hit a treasure trove by breaking into this. Maybe they're able to get into the corporate network. So how do you prevent this? Security experts say call your carrier and ask for a personal identification number to be put on your account. So if anyone calls to make changes, they have to have that number. I'm Danielle Serino, 3 News. All right, Danielle, thank you so much for that. You know, uh, Matt Standridge, it's Friday. That means you, you're you covering weather for us tonight. And I'll tell you what, uh, we have a pretty normal wintry setup going on out there. But every now and then, Mother Nature just loves to throw these curveballs at us. And we have I-90 now that is closed in Lake County in both directions. Uh, I'm looking into that on the traffic maps right now. But you have an update on these snow showers that have been coming down. And, yeah, they can come down very heavy at times. There is actually a look uh, outside. Yeah, I believe that thing. is on I-90, Matt, uh, if you can see right there, you can see yeah. all the flashing lights and whatnot. Looks like it's a snow-covered road. So we're gathering more information on that right now. But uh, just so folks do know, that is I-90 in both directions in Lake County is closed at this hour. Matt? Yeah, so I want to show you, Betsy, from now the weather standpoint, uh, some excellent video there. I believe our photog Dom has been there trying to track that for us, but you can see that snow squall. If I go ahead and highlight for you, it's just south of Painesville, and so you're looking right there at I-90, but it's when you start getting those snow squalls that set up over the same locations that you can get a lot of those slick spots. So over time, I think throughout the rest of the evening, we're going to start to slow down on these snow showers. We have some high pressure moving on in. But there's cold air. There's going to be cold air all weekend long. Betsy, in fact, we dipped below the freezing mark right around 10 o'clock, and we haven't rebounded. We continue to watch that temperature fall this evening. So tomorrow we're probably going to stick in the 20s, even for highs. And then for sat for Sunday, we might get a little bit warmer into some low 30s. But this weekend, you got to know it's going to be chilly. Move forward, though, towards Monday. That's when our next big system will be moving on through. We'll have a chance for a wintry mix setting right over across northeast Ohio. But that won't come until Monday. For now, until for Saturday and Sunday, we're still watching this cold front that has passed through. We've got the snow showers, the lake effect snow machine on right now. We'll eventually watch that high pressure towards your west move on in and start to shut down these snow showers. But for the rest of the evening, we'll continue to have some of these snow squalls with the stronger snow bands right over the primary snow belt you can see going 
in the Lake County, Geauga County, we've got two good bands coming in from the lake. Downtown Cleveland, we continue to have some of those scattered snow showers. And we still have some scattered snow showers towards the south. Worcester, Akron, Canton, we still have some of the light flurries around. But it's cold, so if you're not getting snow right now, you've got the cold. We're in the mid to upper 20s, but it feels colder out there with those northwest winds. It feels like the teens. We're likely to dip into those teens later tonight with the actual air temperature. Sometimes our wind chills could be next to the single digit. So it's going to be very chilly overnight. Tomorrow, the good news is that we'll get a little bit of sunshine. I think especially in the afternoon, but it's going to be cold. We'll need any kind of sunshine we can get with high temperatures only in the 20s. Let's walk you through the National Zymar hour by hour forecast. Still watching those snow showers come off across Lake Erie, and then overnight we'll start to wrap that up. So by tomorrow, there may be a stray lingering snow flurry in Ashtabula County, but over time we'll really start to clear all that out, start to get a little bit more sunshine, and trying to warm up these temperatures a little bit before a next system comes in Monday. By the time we get to Monday, we'll get the temperature right next to the freezing mark and a little bit warmer and that's when we start getting some trouble with our next system. You can see this next system coming in Monday and there's going to be a wintry mix moving in. There's still a lot of questions on where that rain, sleet, ice, snow line will set up but it's most likely going to set up somewhere across northeast Ohio. So Betsy and our, our whole weather team we've been looking at that for the past couple of days. So the next big system will be on Monday when you're looking at that Union Home Mortgage 7 day outlook. Monday's the day to watch but Betsy until then it's going to be downright cold this weekend. Yeah, it definitely will be, and that is complicating things, too. Just a quick update for you on I-90. There's that squall area that uh, Matt was just talking about. Now, it is closed uh, right at 44. The eastbound lanes are now open. The westbound lanes are still closed right there at uh, Ravenna Road in Painesville. And I do want to show you, this is a, a live picture uh, from the ODOT cam of I-90 at State Route 44. There are plow trucks literally going back and forth over this exact area. Area. You can see the snow-covered roads there, uh, and they are going back and forth, salting and plowing as they do so. So it is a slushy mess and probably going to be getting a, a little bit better as the evening wears on as they get this cleared and cleaned up. We'll keep you updated on that for you, though, coming up in just a moment. For right now, we're going to send it to break. We'll be right back with more What's New.
From Adele's divorce to Dustin Diamond's cancer diagnosis, and what's next for the hit show Bridgerton? We've got a lot to unpack in today's pop break. Here's Kiara Cotton. Dave Chappelle is the latest celebrity to test positive for COVID-19. The 47-year-old comedian was set to perform socially distanced shows in Texas when he received the diagnosis. Joe Rogan, who was set to appear at the show and was seen at social gatherings with Chappelle, took to Instagram saying that he's tested negative every day this week. He also shut down rumors that Elon Musk and his partner Grimes were responsible for spreading COVID-19. According to reports, Chappelle is quarantining and has yet to experience any symptoms. And we also have an update on Dustin Diamond. Last week, we told you that Diamond, widely known for his role as Screech on Saved by the Bell, had been diagnosed with cancer. We now know that it is stage four small cell carcinoma, an aggressive form of lung cancer. According to reports, Diamond has undergone his first round of chemotherapy and is set to begin physical therapy soon. And this next story may or may not have you rolling in the deep. It took two years, but singer Adele and her estranged husband, Simon Konecki, finally reached a divorce agreement. The pair tied the knot in May of 2018 after seven years together. But the 32-year-old Grammy winner filed for divorce in 2019, citing irreconcilable differences. Rumor has it, now that this is done, she'll have more time to focus on her fitness goals and, of course, her music. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've surely heard of the Netflix hit show Bridgerton. The show, following eight siblings as they navigate London's marriage market and societal expectations, has been renewed for a second season. Lady Whistledown, the gossip gatekeeper herself, confirmed the news and teased the new season, saying that Lord Anthony, the eldest Bridgerton, intends to dominate the social season. Production for Bridgerton's second season is set to begin this spring. Now, if a romantic drama set in England isn't your cup of tea, don't worry. Netflix has tons of new titles set to come this year. We have a complete list up at WKYC.com. Back to you guys. All right, Kiara, thank you so much. Well, today's show is Something Good comes from these adorable polar bears in the UK. Have you seen this? <laughs> Their white coats turned brown from all of the mud after several runs down a once snowy hill. The bears live on a 10-acre reserve in England, which is one of the largest reserves. Obviously, they are having a great time. And Jay, now you know what I look like when I'm trying to ski. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad. But doesn't that look like fun, Pretty Betsy? Bad. Oh, it looks like a blast. I'm in. I'm in. Okay, ahead in the next half hour of What's New, our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins, is going to be here to answer more of your COVID-19 vaccine questions. That's been big information the last couple of days. And we have What's New in the Cleveland food scene. Doug Tratner will tell us about some of the new eateries that you just have to put on your 2021 eat list.
And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. Well, we do want to get you an update here uh, with some breaking news. A developing situation on I-90 in Lake County. It is closed in both directions. Closed both directions in Lake County. That's between 44 and 528. There is a pileup that has occurred uh, right there near Painesville. You can see all of the flashing lights and whatnot. There have been snow squalls going through the area. And the road obviously gets a little tricky in those parts. If you know about the dynamic signage that uh, the Ohio Department of Transportation has out, that is the the area where they regulate the speeds based on weather conditions and uh, we've had squalls persistent through that area and now we have had a And you can see the snow that is still coming down. We are just east of Menor. So the uh, eastbound lanes are closed at 44. The westbound lanes obviously closed mm. as you head over toward uh, the Ashtabula County line. But it is a significant situation, and it looks like it will be closed for some time. There are many cars that are off the road right now. There's the ODOT cam at Ravenna Road in Painesville. Uh, and there's, of course, a squall going through right now, so you can't really see it. But let me uh, get the pointer out here. This area right here, this is a semi that is in the middle lane uh, in the in the median here. This is a bridge, so they are on the bridge deck, which is concerning. But then you go back up here, and there are cars that have slid off on either side. So obviously this was a pretty significant situation. And uh, ODOT is out there along with many medical crews and road crews getting that fixed up. So I-90 closed in both directions in Lake County for uh, the foreseeable future. We'll let you know at 6, of course, on what matters most. I'll give you another update on what's happening with that traffic. In the meantime, everyone, for the rest of us, happy Friday. Welcome back to What's New. I'm Betsy Kling with Jay Crawford, who's back in the studio. Well, just reminder, if you're going out, drive carefully. I have to say, Betsy, um, mm -hmm. Sunday is going to be a little tough because there's no Browns game. It's championship weekend. We've got the Bills and the Chiefs in the AFC championship game, and we've got the Bucks and Green Bay in the NFC title game. And I'll be depressed watching both of those games because, oh, what could have been? Oh, we were so close, weren't we? Just so mm. close. But it was exciting nonetheless. So I don't know who to cheer for at this point. We'll just cheer for football. <laughs> and here we go next year, Brownies. Here we go. All right, we are going to begin here at the bottom of the half hour uh, with three things that you need to know. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, Japanese officials are denying a British report suggesting that the Olympic Games will be canceled this summer. Japan's prime minister is insisting that they will be prepared with antivirus measures. Tokyo is currently under a state of emergency because of COVID-19. And a recent poll shows 80% of Japanese residents want the Olympics postponed or canceled. Cancellation obviously would be a huge financial blow to Japan. Get this, one report claims it's already cost more than $3.7 billion for the country. It would also be a huge disappointment to so many athletes who are still training. We'll keep you updated. Well, President Biden signed two executive orders today focused on the economic toll the pandemic has taken. One order expands food stamp benefits. The other gives workers more protection, saying people who turn down a job out of fears of health risks due, the, to, due to the pandemic cannot be denied unemployment benefits. Speaking today, the president said, quote, no one should be forced to choose between their livelihoods and their own health. And finally, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will send the article of impeachment uh, against former President Trump to the Senate on Monday. The House impeached Mr. Trump the week before he left office for allegedly inciting a deadly riot at the Capitol earlier in January. The Senate will now determine whether he should be convicted of the charge. The outcome could prohibit him from running for public office again. Well, now we turn to your top talker, and the information on COVID vaccines is constantly changing. Yes, it has been changing. And, of course, the woman keeping us uh, just apprised of all of those changes as best she can, senior health correspondent Monica Robbins. Monica, how are you sorting through all of this? And, hey, what's new today? <sighs> I'm doing the best I can, Bets, but I'll get to the phone numbers in just a second that you're going to see on your screen. But this first topic I have to tell you about just makes my blood boil. You've heard about those vaccine scams, but I want you to know no one will ever ask you to pay for your vaccine. If you registered and someone calls to confirm your appointment and then they ask you for payment, 
bank information, Medicare information, hang up immediately. And also in the news, today, the United Way of Greater Cleveland announced that Cuyahoga County is funding 15 additional operators to help answer your vaccine questions. They're going to be working Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, and can help navigate this confusing vaccine process for you. We're going to provide them with the information they need to contact the appropriate locations to schedule and register themselves. Now, we have hired a temporary staff uh, uh, for the next 10 weeks to open this and to offer this uh, COVID-19 information line. So you see the 211 number for the United Way, also the numbers for UH and the Cleveland Clinic. Those over age 80 who do not have access to a computer can call those lines to get some help. And some of you have told me that UH scheduled your vaccine at their Shaker Heights facility. Well, right now that's the only location. They are planning on adding more. And as soon as we know, we will let you know when and where. And many of you have seen these mass vaccinations in other states and are wondering why isn't that happening? here? Well, each state devised its own vaccination plan and Governor DeWine chose to do it with local providers to make sure neighborhoods of need have access. And some other states are vaccinating everybody 65 and up, unlike Ohio, that is staggering groups and requiring appointments. So that's a lot of news going on in this vaccine world. Back to you. There definitely is. And I thank you always for, for prompting me with questions here uh, in our scripts. And, and the one that you have asked me to ask you is kind of interesting. I, I hadn't really thought about it. But after you get the COVID vaccine, can you still test positive on a viral test? How's that happen? Yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of a trick question, actually. On a viral test, no. The answer is no. Like a PCR test, no, you will not test positive. However, the goal of the vaccine is to boost your immune response to the virus. So the CDC says there is a possibility you could test positive on some antibody tests. But that's all you need to know. And it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. That's back to you. I love it when you ask me to ask you trick questions and you always know the answer. So thank you very much, Monica. Imagine that. Have a great weekend, girlfriend. Sure. We'll see you again with you more too. on this see tonight ya. at 6. <laughs> well, still ahead for us, friends, on what's new. Which company is paying its employees to get the COVID-19 vaccine? Then Doug Tratner takes us to three new restaurants you have got to try this year. And, of course, we want to keep you updated on what's going on with that forecast as we still have snow that's coming down, Matt Standridge. Hey, Chief, it's good to see you. Eventually, that snow should start to wind down, but we have high pressure moving in, which will cut off some of that snow. We've seen some of the snow flurries across downtown with our CSU cam, but uh, Betsy and I were looking at the forecast for tomorrow morning. How low is it going to go? We'll talk about the teens coming up.
Happy anniversary, NASA Glenn. You make all of us so very proud. I was lucky enough to MC a special ceremony celebrating Dr. Janet Cavandi. And when you're first told some of the projects that NASA is working on, you kind of can't believe it, right? It's like, no way, that's gotta be Star Wars or Star Trek or some kind of crazy thing. And then you start to hear more about it and it is a point of pride. Literally the road to back to space, back to the moon and eventually to Mars is coming right through Northeast Ohio. That's right, they give us some swagger as we go around the world. 80 years, NASA Glenn Research Center broke ground in Cleveland 80 years ago. And they asked a, a few folks around town who've been involved with the center to give some shout outs. I was lucky enough to be asked to do it. Of course, I I was fangirling all the way and like, oh, I can't say it quite enough. I'm I'm proud that they were able to edit that down into a very concise soundbite. But uh, yeah, congratulations to all the folks who work at NASA, Glenn. You are a part of a huge piece of Northeast Ohio. I love space travel, Betsy. When I lived in Florida, I used to try to get over to watch shuttle launches whenever I could. Mm -hmm. And I, the last one I was able to witness was actually the very first mission to start putting together the International Space Station, and it was a night launch. So my kids were young then. We're Ooh. all sitting outside. It's like four in the morning. You know, we woke them up in the middle of the night uh, to get them out there to look at it. And they canceled it. So we had to get a hotel, stay another <laughs> night, and watch it the next morning. It was one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed. Goosebumps. It was so cool. Yeah, those sh the shuttle launchers were legit. Oh. I got to see a couple of those and some other rockets, too. And there's just nothing like it. Yep, especially at night. Really, really cool. Okay, it is Friday, and that means Matt Standridge is in with us to give us the weather. And, Matt, I want a do-over. Uh, I, I want yesterday's weather again because I enjoyed it in the moment, but today was just so gross. I want another one like yesterday so badly. <laughs> I know. I, th I think we deserved yesterday. We tried to soak it in. Yesterday, if you saw a bright object in the night sky, it wasn't a shuttle launch. It was the moon. I mean, we don't always see the moon very often in January, but we had a little bit of light sky. We're not going to have that as much, Jay, tonight, though, because it's been cloudy all day. We'll probably stay cloudy tonight, and we still have those snow showers that are coming in across Lake Erie, and it's that cold air that rides into northeast Ohio, and that cold air is going to sit over us for the entire weekend. In fact, tomorrow, we may not even get out of the 20s. We're probably expecting highs in the mid-20s. So a very chilly weekend is in store for us. I want to show you the weather maps now. Cold front has passed through most of the Great Lakes and Northeast, and then you've turned on the lake effect snow machines. However, when you look westbound, we do have some high pressure right over Chicago. That thing's headed right towards Cleveland. And so as it approaches, it'll start to shut down the lake effect snow bands that you see. You see at Lake Michigan, the lake effect snow is not that intense, right? And Lake Erie, we've got some good bands. Lake Ontario, they got some really good bands. So over time, we'll start to push the snow out of here and then just have very cold temperatures for tomorrow. Right now, scattered snow showers throughout most of northeast Ohio. We have particularly two kind of stronger bands right now, one in Lake County where we have that accident and shutdown on I-90 and another strong band in Geauga County. Here's a closer look. It's on 44 once it intersects I-90, but some slowdowns out there. And just be careful if you did have to travel this evening, those snow bands will shift a little bit over time. And some of them are quite intense over a small area. So you get into one, it's pretty intense. You can get out of one and it's not too bad at all. That's those kind of lake effect snow bands that we come to, to deal with here across Northeast Ohio. Right now it's cold though. Some Northwest winds out there making it feel like the teens as that light blue color only feels like it's 15 degrees in Cuyahoga County. Now most of us will probably dip into actual teens for that actual air temperature tonight with some of those snow flurries starting to wind down. So by tomorrow morning, by the time we get to sunrise, we should start to get a little bit of sun, maybe a little bit more sun in the afternoon. The snow should be out of here, but it's going to be very cold. Here's your National Zymar hour by hour forecast. Still snow showers this evening. Once we get to about two, three, four o'clock tomorrow morning, before you're waking up, we'll start to break down those snow showers and we may have a couple clouds here and there for the rest of the evening. I want to show you your Union Home Mortgage seven day outlook. This weekend's pretty quiet. The next big system comes in on Monday. Jay, that's going to have a wintry mix of a mess coming in for the start of next week. Uh, Betsy, you're going to have even more details coming up here in just a little bit, but that's our next big system. Until then, I think this weekend's pretty quiet, but it's pretty cold. All right, Matt. Thank you so much. We'll see you again coming up on Front Row.
In the meantime, it's time to see what's been happening in the digital sphere. And for that, we bring in our digital anchor, Stephanie Haney. Hey, Stephanie, what's clicking in Cleveland? Hey, Betsy. First up today, Governor Mike DeWine wants to get the word out about his expedited pardon project. He held a virtual information session today. Now, the project helps certain people who have completed sentences for past convictions clear their records more quickly so they can move on with their lives. In the first year of the project in 2019, nine people got pardoned through this fast track program. And the state estimates that thousands of Ohioans qualify. The program website is linked for you to check out on WKYC.com. Aldi is the latest company to say it will pay its employees to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Frontline workers will get two hours of pay per dose, and the company plans to set up on-site vaccination clinics at its warehouses and its offices to make it as easy as possible once those vaccines are available. Now, there is a lot of money on the line tonight in the Mega Millions drawing, so we asked you at home, what is the first thing you would buy if you won? Here's a creative one. Mary Lee wants a roof on the Brown Stadium so a soccer team can play there. Paying off all kinds of debt and buying cars was a very popular answer as well. Now, of course, charity is always a big one. Colleen McElvain says she'd be very hands-on driving around a motorhome and handing out cash to strangers. I want to get on that route. And a lot of people say life wouldn't change for them. They'd start with buying beer, Snickers bars, and groceries. I think that last group took our question very literally. Now, this was also a popular one, Betsy. I think I would start with buying a house because I feel like once you get your home paid for, you're really set and you can do whatever else you want. What about you, Betsy? What would you buy first if you won? Uh, I would probably uh, set that money aside for my kids' education. I think that's a big one. Pay off the house and, I don't know, maybe maybe take a very quarantine vacation somewhere. That would be great. Yes. <laughs> maybe someplace warm to Travel, burn. for sure. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Jay. I'm just trying to figure out how much beer and candy you can buy with a billion dollars. <laughs> My goodness, dream a little bigger. Come on. Still ahead on what's new. <laughs> new restaurants are popping up. Our food expert takes us to three that you really need to try this year. Then the Bernie Mania is still alive. The creative treats one local bakery whipped up to commemorate his outfit, if that's what you call it, at the inauguration.
Welcome back to what's new. Northeast Ohio knows food. We have tons of great local restaurants and now even more are beginning to move in. Doug Tretner tonight shows us what's new in 2021 in the Cleveland restaurant scene. Chefs and restaurant owners are optimists. That's why despite everything that's going on, new restaurants continue to open. Today we're going to take a look at three new restaurants opening in the new year. Chatty's Pizzeria in Bay Village, Dante's new project Goma Downtown, and we're going to head over to Lakewood, hit Lindy's Lake House, which is going to become Bar Italia any day now. So I'm here with Matt Harlan, AKA Chatty at Chatty's Pizzeria in Bay Village. First, before we go one step further, Matt, tell us about Chatty. Where'd that nickname come from? Well, back in the day, before I had any responsibilities or cares, I was just a young punk in the corner that didn't shut up. <laughs> and uh, one of our servers nicknamed me Chatty Maddie, and uh, Michael and the staff loved it. You mentioned Michael. Uh, you're talking about Michael Simon. Uh, you worked for him for 23 years. Correct me if I'm wrong, making you the second longest employee of, of uh, his company. Second one, yeah. No. And I imagine, the beach is right there, I imagine in summer, uh, you've got a patio, but that patio extends. Uh, you've got live music in the back, I understand, in the summer. What's it like um, here um, in the summer? It doesn't stop. I'm looking at three things right here. Tell us what we've got in front of us. Uh, so, meatball sub, just a classic sub. A burrata salad, which is something that, you know, my wife and I would eat at home. And then uh, a mortadella sandwich, which I've come to love mortadella over the last decade. It's, it's the original bologna, right? <laughs> Cheers, Matt. Cheers. Rick Duty, owner of 17 River Grill, uh, also Cedar Creek Grill in Beechwood, and we're here in what was Lindy's Lake House, but it's now Bar Italia. Uh, did you change this restaurant overnight, Rick? No, nah, it's been a few weeks. We just didn't want to do another Italian restaurant. Um, we wanted to specialize on in, in things that we could do, hopefully extremely well. Uh, that's why you see three pastas in, the, in front of you. Um, we're actually not doing pizza in this restaurant. Uh, that is um, intentional. They're the kind of dishes that you can enjoy tonight for dinner and tomorrow for lunch, right? Well, I used to feed my entire family that way. We really would prefer to leave the experts to doing what they do best. Um, in this case, uh, we tried uh, a number of different pastas. We felt like uh, Matt from Flower was a uh, flower pasta company, has a great product. He's got a great following. And the same goes with the bread. Um, the best bakery, in my opinion, in the city uh, I'm sure that could be refuted as on the rise. We love them. Um, we talk to them. We're excited to serve their breads. So Dante, uh, you first announced this project two years ago. You took over the uh, the Canado space, prime spot on a prime street in the heart of downtown. Uh, what did you like about that space? In the front, we're going to tear down those windows and there'll be garage doors. So from outside, you can see all the way through the whole restaurant once it's, once it's finished. But the sushi bar, right? center stage right in the middle it's all once again wide open so japanese fusion it's a it's a loose term um obviously sushi uh, what are some of the other things that uh, people can look forward to the kitchen will be more of a fusion uh just kind of doing what you know what i was used to doing in california and working for the for the mandarin there and um you know i have a lot of i'm putting in a walk station which is something i've never had in, in any restaurant so we're gonna do a lot of a lot of sauteed wok dishes um we're gonna do some tobanyaki dishes and I understand you've got a large downtown uh, downstairs space to work with. What are you what are you planning for that? Down there is going to be a speakeasy cocktail lounge with a secret entrance, and you're going to have to figure out how to get in and figure out who you know to get it. But <laughs> something, uh, yeah, a little more exclusive, a little more fun. So I definitely won't be coming there. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure. It out. All right, thanks, Doug. Now I'm hungry. Bar Italia will open any day now. Chatty's opens in February, and Goma is expected to start feeding folks in May. Good news. So much new stuff. All right, what else is coming up for us? Well, it's the gift that keeps on giving. A local bakery whips up their take on Bernie Mania in our show of something good. Then coming up on What Matters Most at 6, with six months to the Summer Olympics, there's a chance they could be canceled. Local Olympic hopefuls speak out on how they are preparing amid uncertainty. We'll be right back.
A bakery in North Canton showed us something good today. Little chunk of goodness is keeping the Bernie mania alive with cookies. They've baked up mitten <laughs> cookies, and they look just like the ones that Bernie wore on Inauguration Day. And there's also, Betsy, a cookie of Bernie sitting in his chair. I think you can see the mittens on the cookie, but not the yellow envelope. It's all set to purchase right. for 15 bucks. <laughs> It is so cute. You know, through the magic of television, we have our different backgrounds here. Let me see if I can find him real quick. I know I got a Bernie in here. Yep, there he is. Yep, <laughs> there's Bern. Right there in the background. He We're out of time. We'll see too. you Monday. Russ and Laura are next. <laughs> now at six, Olympic confusion. It is kind of heartbreaking to think about. Um, I'd like to think that I'm resilient enough and I'll find a way no matter what. You know, like I think that's kind of what makes us uh, Olympic hopeful. As uncertainty grows around the Tokyo Olympics,